Hi there, my name is Toby Hazler, known as Toby Urban Sketch, and thank you very much for joining me in this Sketchbox Urban Sketching video. What we're going to do today is firstly have a look inside all the supplies from the Sketchbox Urban Sketch edition, and we're going to decide how might we use them and how do these different supplies apply to the art of urban sketching. I'll give you a couple of little things you might want to do before we start our sketch. But before long, we will, of course, be sketching. We'll be doing a lovely image, a lovely scene, um, which is from my hometown, uh, which is called St Neots, and the street is St Mary's. If you want to share your experience with this Sketchbox Urban Sketching Edition, please use the hashtag, hashtag Sketchbox Urban Sketch. So this is our sort of urban sketching sketchbox selection of supplies. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through each bit talk you through you know the best case for using them and and how they work and, and why they're useful for urban sketching. Now what we have first are these Winsor Newton fine liners. There's a set of three going from 0.1 millimeter up to 0.5 millimeter and they're in a cool grey colour. Now ink and fine liners are the absolute backbone, the sort of workhorse of urban sketching and we'll use these in our sketch at the beginning and the end to create that structure, to give that kind of skeleton of the different urban aspects that we see, like houses and uh, road signs and all these different things. So the way we get them on our page nice and quickly is with fine liners. The key to these is they're waterproof, so when we add watercolours on top they stay there, they're nice and crisp still. And the fact that they are cool grey means that we don't have to worry that it's going to overpower the watercolour. But we can also, by using different sizes, give a different emphasis to our line. So you'll see in our sketching that the 0.1 can provide a lovely light framework and the 0.5 can be a real powerful influence which really brings all the structure back. Next we have a lovely range of aqua brushes. Now these are aqua brush duos, so you can see they have a lovely felt end which is like a brush end. And that's good for doing large areas or applying a loose and big area of tone. Then they also have a little sort of nib end. So with this we can be much more precise and almost, again, draw lines perhaps if you want to change from your fine liners. The difference is though that these are water soluble. So if we were to use these as our only line making um, aspect, then when we put our watercolours on, our lines would disappear and it would all go sort of very fluid. Now instead, what we use these for are applying tone, which we can also soften and make interact with our watercolours. Um, I suggest that you take these and you just swatch them out. So with each one, use the brush and just create a little square so you can see exactly how dark each colour is. And next we have our masking fluid. Now masking fluid is something which we apply to our page to preserve the white of the page. We then need to let it dry and at the end we can peel it off and we'll be doing exactly that today, but then you could peel it off to reveal some lovely crisp white paper. Now, with this masking fluid, what you'll find is it's got a lovely drawing nib. So what you can do is literally just draw and gently squeeze. Before jumping onto your final piece, I'd suggest just on a separate piece of paper, practice a little bit of drawing, maybe just even write your name, draw a couple of squares, just so you understand how much fluid is going to come out and how freely. Now we're onto the colour half of our box here. And what do we have? We have these three brushes. We've got an angled shader, a filbert, and in the middle, a round brush. Each of these brushes has slightly different uses, and that comes to the amount of water it can hold, or the shape of the brushes. So we'll use a couple of them. We'll use the angled shader to apply that loose and light watercolour first. And then we'll use actually the round brush to apply much more punchy and bold colours. The filbert we're not using today, but again, you can use that for different shapes. So it's brilliant for adding little brick marks in, for example, or if you want loose and, and light trees. Then, of course, dare I say the most exciting thing in urban sketching is the application of loose and interesting colours. And uh, with that comes watercolours. Now, this sketchbook signature set of watercolours has 36 watercolours and it has it in a nice and mobile pot. You can see if you spread them out, you can see that I have been having fun with them. And the reason I've been having fun with them is again, I would recommend swatching these out so that you understand what these different colors look and feel like. Now within this box, we have an enormous range of colors, 36 colors, of course, um, which have been selected with watercolor theory in mind. What we're gonna do, we're gonna talk a little bit about watercolor theory in our sketch, but we're also gonna talk about how we select our colors. Um, do we base it on reality? 
Do we just abstract it and base it on what we think? Or do we do something in between? And of course, we will be playing with some of these fun colours and just see how pearlescent and how shiny these um, gold metallic colours really are. Now this sketchbook is 5.5 by 5.5 inches. It's by Han Muller, who are a fantastic paper maker, and it is cotton, which is brilliant because when we sketch with urban sketches, we use loads of water, and a cotton page is very absorbent and very resilient to that water. Again, we can see that I've been having a little play, these are my swatches, and just, it's, it's really useful to do the swatches in this book, again, because every watercolour paper is different, and knowing how it's going to respond when we start sketching, just understanding, having that bit of experience will be really useful. And for all of this, of course, we need uh, something to hold our water. And this is what we've got here. So this is a Faber-Castell travel water cup. Simply clips open like this, and then it's very sturdy. Couple of things with this. Number one, you can pop your brushes on these handy sort of divots. And number two, obviously it's uh, compressible, so you can carry it around really easily, pour it out in a drain or in some grass, and you're good to go on to wherever your next stop is. So we've looked inside our sketchbox supplies, and it's time to start our sketch. Now, I want to just show you here the finished scene. This is our lovely, loose, expressive scene, and that's what we're heading for. Now, along the way, five different steps, we need a bit of faith because things are loose and lively, and I just wanted to show you that so that you do understand that we are heading somewhere and you don't lose faith and you just enjoy the process, don't, don't get stressed and I'm sure that you'll produce something fun that you are proud of by the end. So we are ready for step one and step one is going to be using our fine liners. So I've got my uh, three fine lines here and also our masking fluid and step one is all about shape. Now shapes is how we simplify, and urban sketching is all about getting things on the page quickly, simply, and then adding our personality. So, what do I mean by shapes? Well, let's start with our 0.1 millimeter fine liner. And we've got this whole two page spread. The other fun thing we can do with a sketchbook is start to incorporate going over the, over the edges. So instead of treating a sketchbook necessarily as a square, well, why don't we start in the square, but see what happens if we just sort of focus over a little bit and start tumbling on to the other page. So with that in mind, I've got my 0.1 millimeter fine liner. I'm gonna start at the back of our reference photo. At the back, you can see this lovely church. And this church, if we get the, the shape of it, and what is the shape? It's a, a rectangle with a couple of, sort of triangles on top. That sets the height of the whole scene, because now from everywhere else, everything else we do, we can compare to our church. We can then just get the heights quite easily right. Now, this scene is quite complicated in many ways, isn't it? It's got lots of shapes going on, but all we can do is think about them as shapes. And as we come forward, we just draw the shapes we can see. So we've got this sort of uh, rectangle or rhomboid because it's got slightly angled edges. And then we've got a triangle here. And if we just focus on, on pulling out different shapes before long, would have built up our scene without really feeling like we've done anything super complicated. All the time, remember, look at this triangle finishes about the top of the church. That's what we're doing with our, our shapes. Another sort of important principle of urban sketching, of certainly of my sketching style, is that mistakes do not matter. So I'm sure that we will make between us a lot of mistakes doing this sketch today, but it's fine. And you know, even if we do some things on purpose. So why don't I, oh, I, I didn't mean to put a, a window there and it needs to be over here. Well, look, we'll see that this just won't matter by the end of the image, this sort of extra set of lines and things won't matter. And that's why we're starting with our really fine, fine liner. We're starting with our thinnest pen to give us our thinnest line. Now we can come and find a few more of these shapes. And you can see just building that up. All we've done really is a square, a rectangle. We're just building up shapes little by little. This other side's a bit more complicated in many ways. The houses are sort of stacked together. You've got to remember all these things that we're seeing, they're very small shapes, they're very tiny. And don't sort of make them too big before, well, before they should be. Also, it's very hard to see in the reference what's going on, really. It's very difficult to really pick out exactly what's going on. And... Therefore, it doesn't have to be easy in your sketch to pick out what's going on. So we can find shapes that we think we can see. 
maybe I think there looks like there's a nice it's a triangle here, a little rectangle in front of it, and then there's a sort of chimney, and we're onto our other page already, and we can come across and there's sort of a, a parallelogram or something making up this roof, and then we're onto this building as well. And actually, I've just drawn a, a bit of a mess of different shapes, but do you see how it resembles the image? Because the image is a mess of a bit of, a sort of mess of a set of shapes as well. So we just continue this idea and we'll just gradually build in our scene. And we're almost there, actually. We're very almost there at the end of step one. Now, you know, yours is going to look very different to mine, and that's because we are working loosely, working quickly. Even if I tried to copy my own sketch, it would look very different the second time. Because a lot of this is just by feel. It's like, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, oh, where do I want this line to go? What do I want to happen here? And I make spontaneous sort of decisions at the at that moment. And those spontaneous decisions come through experience, not of being a brilliant sketcher, but experience of doing a lot of sketching and knowing what I enjoy doing and knowing what I enjoy sort of, you know, when I do it, what I enjoy looking at. So the next part of this stage is to use our masking fluid. Now, give it a little shake, make sure it's nice and liquid inside. And it's worth just taking the top off and having a go on another piece of paper and just seeing how does it flow out. When you, when you basically draw with it, you just use this nib to draw, how does your masking fluid flow out? And all we're going to do is we're going to use it like a little bit of a pen. So with the masking fluid, we're just going to block in those lovely white buildings. And what we're going to be left with is this kind of blue block of, well, blue, blue block of masking fluid, which is then going to be able to dry. And that allows us to peel it off at the end and leave those white buildings really wonderful and a crisp white. Now, you'll notice there's lots of gaps in my in my masking fluid. And the reason is I'm leaving some gaps specifically for windows. So I'm making shapes, white shapes at the moment with my with my masking fluid. But I'm also leaving little gaps for texture and for just interest and difference. And before you know it, we're all done. So we can pop our lid back on and we can move on to the next stage. Now, before we get to the next stage, it's really important that this is completely dry because we want the masking fluid to not get picked up in our brushes. So if it ends up in our brushes, it could damage the brushes. So we want this to be completely dry. So maybe five, 10 minutes, have a coffee, something like that. And I will see you where we'll be using our watercolors, our brushes and our cup to add some light and some beautiful color to our sketch. So we are back and we got what we need out. We've got our dry masking fluid. So you can tell it's dry because if you touch it, it's not sticky anymore, it doesn't feel tacky. It will still be shiny, but it shouldn't be sticky. I've got my full pot of water just off to one side. I've got my three brushes, my watercolours. I've got this side of it open and we might have a bit of fun with some, some of the other colours as well. But for now, we've got this side of our box open. And in my hand, I've got some tissues, which are important just to have on hand. And we'll be able to then just control the water in our brush a little bit better. Now, what are we going to do? Well. In urban sketching, it's a mix of real colours and expressive or abstract colours, colours which aren't really there. And I like to start with a big brush, and particularly for this step, step two, we're all about adding the light, the fun. So a really big brush helps us do that, it helps us be really free with our colours. I'm going to start with marine blue, which is a really lovely bright blue. You can just see, if we get a nice watery mix there in our palette, and then we come off, clean your brush and just make sure it's quite clean and then come back with just water. So look, just painting some water onto this page and just get a little bit onto the left page. We're going to focus a lot of the colour initially on the right page and then see what happens, see what it looks like and, and put it across to the left as well. So now that we've got water on our page, we can just bring our nice marine blue and touch it in. And watercolours will paint themselves. So if we just touch it, we have lots of water on the page, then we can take away a lot of the effort ourselves. So we don't have to do everything. We can just let the watercolors really sing. As they're spreading and moving around, we can move on to our next color. So just clean your brush off and let's pick out something which feels like a nice, that church. So that church is quite a, a pale yellow, but 
Why don't we make it a bit warmer? We can make our own decisions, right? So let's take an Indian red. That's a, a really lovely colour, sort of earthy, brick-like colour. And I'm just going to paint that in. And it's going to flow into the sky. And that's fine. In fact, that's not just fine, that's wonderful. That is letting watercolours do their thing. And we can use this same colour in a few places. So one of the key parts for me of sort of watercolour theory in urban sketching is never just use a colour in one place. Always have it sort of harmonious through the image so that the eye isn't just excessively drawn to ooh, that big patch. For example, this could have just been a big patch of, of brown and then it would have it would have just clashed. Our eye wouldn't have quite known what to do. There you go, that's that's my touches of Indian red. Then we've got lots of murky colours, haven't we? Lots of sort of grumpy colours. So let's take something like this Payne's grey. What we want to do, get that nice and watery, because we don't want it to be black, we want it to be a lovely sort of neutralish grey. And again, that's where this bigger brush helps as well, having lots of water. And we're going to pop that in. And look where all those murky colours are. They're all not just on the road, but they're also going up these houses. And then, having got lots of our colours in, we can just, we've just used three colours, remember, so far, but we can just go back and touch a few bits of bolder pigment in, just to encourage these pigments to move and blend. And don't worry if you're sort of thinking, oh no, I can't, I can't control this. Well, at the moment, that's not the point. The point isn't to control it. But we'll come back later and we'll add a little bit more control to it. So don't worry, don't worry. Just have fun and let yourself sort of be free and expressive. We've got some yellow now, so I'm just picking out a little bit of bees yellow, which is a lovely name. Um, and I'm going to drop that in in a few places. And again, just have that sing and move and dance between different areas. And then, I said we'd probably pull some colour over here. And so let's just take some of these greys, just really lightly, mix it with a bit of that yellow. So now we've got this kind of almost green with that blue as well. And we just pull that down and that will now look because of that masking fluid suddenly we're going to have something really interesting under that we're not going to know exactly what it is until we take off the masking fluid but it's going to be interesting and that's all we need to do for for step two so step three now is to apply a bit of tone a bit of interesting shadow now this page is where i have just swatched out my um lovely aqua brushes now i've done that already and I know that what I want are these lovely warm greys. We've got warm grey light and warm grey medium. So our first step is going to be to take our warm grey light and apply it to our page. Let's start in the middle of our image and just find, you know, look at the bottom of this church. It's definitely got some shadow. And this light grey is very subtle, but also definitely there. In each of these rooftop shapes we made, we can kind of colour in the shapes and then just bring down some more of the shadow here. And all we're doing is creating a really quick, simple, but very effective shadow. All of these windows are dark as well, aren't they? So we've got all this masking fluid. Now that makes it really easy for us just to come down and drop a touch of shadow into there. And anywhere else, yes, look at this building. So this building, maybe we just want some tone on it to sort of complement that lovely bees yellow that we've added earlier. Now having done that, we are now going to move on to our warm grey medium, which is going to be much bolder. And we're going to go over some of the same places again. So the windows, suddenly, we can get a much more convincing shadow, much more convincing sort of tonal layer. We can come in here and add in, again, just a more convincing darkness. And you can see this darkness, can't you, under the well, at the top of the roof, really, for this whole white building. Hopefully you're starting to imagine what it might look like when we finally take off this masking tape. We can come and just, again, create this more interesting tonal range through all these buildings, just by adding some darker shadows. Now, the thing to remember about these aqua brushes is they are aqua brushes, so they do respond to water. So what we're going to do in a second is take a, a brush, just with a tiny bit of water on it, and suddenly we'll be able to make some of these colours really come to life. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we can take our brush and just soften some of these edges. Do you see how we've got these hard edges from where we've drawn in? If we come in with our brush, we can soften and we can make it feel 
a lot more like we've applied watercolour, but it was much quicker, much more easy, much more controlled. And there you go, that's all we're doing for this stage, really quick. And that's what Urban Sketching is, it's quick, it's expressive, it's fun. So we're back in stage four and almost there. This is the penultimate stage. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna add more color and have more fun and just some of those really bold and bright touches. So take this time our round brush. I'm gonna pop the other two to the side and we're just gonna make a bit more of those colors which have worked, these really fun colors, and also find some interesting highlights within our image. So, for example, what's worked really well? Well, I love the, the way these uh, the Indian red has melded with the yellow. So let's take some more Indian red and let's just pop that in. Remember that was meant to be our church, but the church is blended with everything else. So we can come back in and we can just reaffirm it. Again, this building up here is supposed to be a nice Indian red. It's kind of disappeared into the distance as the colours fade and dry and that's normal but we can come back now and have a bit of fun with it. Then I said it was the the interaction with the yellow I really like so let's get some really bold yellow and just re-harness some of that interaction and again just let it do its thing. Now we've lost some of this murkiness and what worked well before well let's double down let's add a bit of Payne's Grey in there and just push back that that sort of light and let the, the murkiness come back and whilst we're here whilst we're using our, our colors from before get a little bit of that blue I'm just gonna add some splashes you can do splashes a couple of ways you can just tap like I am or if you want you can take a, a pen and tap on it or the other way around you can tap the brush on the pen and perhaps let's uh, demonstrate with some of this yellow as well because this yellow will make really lovely highlights and there you go. My preferred way is to tap. Um, it's the way I feel I get the most control. And so that's why I like doing that. Now, I said some, some interesting highlights as well. So one star, I, I noticed this lovely road sign in the side. So let's take, again, we need, if we're gonna use a color somewhere, we have to use it in a couple of places. So I'm gonna take a new color. I'm gonna take this lavender, because it looks really interesting. And it, I think it's sort of representative of the sign, but also different and interesting. And I'm just going to pop that lavender in there. Now, one way I could use it in another place is to create my own interesting highlight. So let's say this sign was lavender as well. Why not? In in reality, it's it's blue. So let's make it interesting in lavender. We could also decide this chimney was lavender. Maybe one of these chimneys is lavender. And the other way is we can just add some splashes. So now that lavender's through our image. It's abstract, but it's based in reality. It's based in this sign. And it's also really interesting, just lovely. It makes makes my heart feel uh, feel good having this this nice colour, and that's what it's about. Now, what we're also going to do, if I just shut this side, why don't we have a play with some of these very different colours, or at least at least one of them? So let's let's get some gold in our scene because why not? Again, look at that lovely glow, and we can just imagine that golden glimmering sunlight, and we can just decide we gonna feel our image with this this sparkle and look at that look at do you see it hopefully the camera can pick up just how well it kind of spreads out and sparkles and again why not just splash it around and why not add it in the sign why not get a little reflection in the window you know this is about us and us having fun and that's what urban sketching should be about and that's all we need to do you know if we've got something as fascinating as a, a sparkly gold or a, maybe put a bronze in or something what we don't want to do is take over the image. We want it to be subtle and beautiful. So we need this to dry and we need this to dry really well because what we're going to do at the end in our last stage is take off all this masking gum and then use some pen work where you will see all the structure come back and suddenly this sort of crazy colour will become our image again and be so fascinating because of how we let the watercolours themselves just have fun and paint themselves so we are back and here we go this is nice and dry so i can touch everywhere nothing smudges which is exactly what we need to be able to pull off the masking gum now lots of ways you could try some people like scraping with a little uh, gently with a knife or even using a putty eraser for me um just using my nail and gently pulling at the page is the best way of of cleanly removing it 
And as if by magic, there we are, we're left with this crisp, lovely white underneath, these pooling colours and some of our line work still visible from before. And what are we doing now? Well, we're using our boldest pen. So I'm going to use my 0.5 millimetre pen. And all I'm doing is just going to go around. And what we can do now is both respond to our um, picture or our reference, or, you know, if it's in reality, you know, whatever the scene is in front of us. But we can also respond to what the colours have decided to do. So we want to find edges in the colours, for example. We can add things in we didn't add in our first draft. So this chimney wasn't there before, but now it is, and that's fine. Because the first draft was supposed to be a draft, it was really quick to give us a basis for all this lovely colour. You see, this is an example, we've got this lovely shape, and now this lovely shape can be a wonky window. Then we can do the same going back. We can find this wall, which I didn't add in before. And so all we're doing is we are finding our image and responding to our watercolours again. And as we just move around, so never do too much in one space. So what I mean by that is I don't, I don't want to do loads and loads here and regret it. But what we can do is we can do a bit here and then move, go down to the windows and then we'll move across to the other side of the scene. And in, in always moving around, we avoid overdoing it. We can balance it on the other side, take a step back and then decide, you know what, yeah, we can add more. It, it, it would like some more in there. So then let's go, like I said, to the other side. So we'll find these interesting shapes. This is another example where, look, these colours have done really interesting things and we can just decide to use that structure in our pen. Say this little blob of colour, let's go around it and around that one. Same here, that roof can come around that lovely, interesting blob of colour. We can add in some of these chimneys that we didn't initially. Find this chimney as well. And don't forget, where things aren't clear, just do keep looking back at your reference and just working out, you know, how do we marry the two up gently? And we can come back. And look, this lovely building suddenly comes to life when we've got this lovely white space around it. And this is where we can capture these windows. Maybe a couple of these sort of things we said would be brick marks we can capture as well. And hopefully you're seeing that this bold pen this is a, it's still the same grey but because it's bold and deeper deeper in its sort of thickness and in its tone that means we're applying much more structure with this with this pen than we were before with the other pen. Um, but that's why we also leave it to the end because we don't want to overdo it at the beginning. We wouldn't have got all this fluidity if we'd created a very structured image and just done a sort of paint by numbers between the lines. And there we go. So we, we're almost kind of done with a lot of these details. There's one thing though that, that's missing and I wonder if you can see what it is. Well, it is, well, it's going to be two things. Now I always say one thing and I regret it. Two things which we're going to add in which are missing. So one is we've got a few more extra road signs, haven't we? So Let's get this sign, but then we've also got things like this lovely lamp post, which we can now add on top of our colours. And with that, on this other side, we've got this telephone pole. And with the telephone pole come these amazing lines which connect everything. So a good hint for the lines, just practice them, because when you do it, you've just got to go for it and create this lovely line coming across your image and you only get the one chance but if it's loose and light you've just done a little practice it's going to look interesting it's going to flow through the image and we can just do the same with these and there there's a little one coming across and now these lines are connecting and, and spider webbing between everything another lamp post and the other thing i said is we've got this curb line which we can now bring in the, the sidewalk which will just create that sense of flow. And it's another great opportunity to just use these edges of colour. So you see how we've just given this colour an edge. We can do the same even just within the colour. We can just create some little lines. Don't forget, if you want to share what you've created, you can share it with the hashtag, hashtag sketchbox urban sketch. So thank you everyone for watching. My name is Toby Hazlett, known as Toby Urban Sketch. It's been a pleasure sketching along with you. Don't forget, pop your initials and perhaps the date or the place in, in a corner at the bottom. 
part of that is putting our name on, being proud of whatever's happened on the page, just being proud of it and enjoying it. And I hope you are proud of what you've achieved. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're really excited to start using your urban sketching sketchbook supplies.